Okay, now let's hope that you're still with us, because I'm not quite. I zoned out a little bit too much while doing the upload, watching YouTube videos, which I probably should not have done, and now my mind's a little scatterbrained. So where we left off was we now have our crud table. What's our crud table tell us? Well, basically we can interpret it to create our fragment design for our fragment diagram. Uh, specifically, we'll be starting with level 1, and then we'll be going into level 2. We won't be going any deeper levels than that, mainly because it takes a lot of time and can kind of get annoying, and um, we'll probably have to do this for any SRS as we make, but nonetheless, for this, we're just going to stay at level 1 and level 2. Okay, so let's get started. First system we're going to be modeling is the situation of enroll in course. Enroll in course. Okay. Now I've got a crud table. I hope you've got your crud table. I've got my crud table. Yeah. Okay. So, who's interacting here? I'm just going to pull up the document again so I can follow along. A student. Okay. I think we've got our external entity here. <coughs> and a cough from talking like this. From you I drank and write at the same time. Student. Ah, student. Now what's the student trying to do? Well, he's trying to enroll in the course, which I would call a process. Now remember, he's technically an external thing accessing the system. So try to imagine an imaginary bubble where he's all interacting with. Okay, so... Now we're going to draw our process. And the process one. And what it does. Um, I apologize if there's any sound quality issues here. Uh, my headset is currently being borrowed, so I'm limited to talking to the laptop microphone. And it's not quite as good as the headset part was. I will in the future have a headset available again for actual um, videos in the future, which I'm probably going to do, whether anyone watches them or not. Mainly you know, because I kind of like it. Weird. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Where we start? A student can use a subsystem to enroll in a course. Okay, so first, we're going to do a request to enroll. Now, when you're writing the data line, it's proper to write what it is that it does on the line itself. So it makes sense. Obviously, it's self-explanatory when you can actually read these things, because it's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's someone requesting to enroll. Now, da -da 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 -da. Given a student ID and course ID, the system first checks to see if the student has required prerequisites. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to be interacting with some databases. Um, which one? I guess course info and student registration, I believe. Let's make our databases. No, I apologize if you can barely hear me or the quality of this sucks. As I'm new to this, yeah, student registration. And I actually contemplate doing this in Visio, uh, but I find this is more tactile and I can talk along a lot better this way, whereas I'm still kind of learning Visio. Where do we find info about the course and the requisites? In course info. Yep. Okay, so, let's see. Possibility and enroll the student. Wait. 
Oh, not yet. All right, fine, then. I'm going to just quickly erase this. Pretend you never saw that. I love having myself there. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see if the student has the prerequisites. Course info. What are the prerequisites? Prerequisites. Prereqs. student doesn't, the system informs them. Uh, student doesn't, the system informs them and stops further processing. So that's pretty much the thing. And says, no wreck. Sad face. I believe that was an important part of it. Don't have the requisites. No get in. Next, the system checks to see if there is actually room for the student in one section of the course. Oh, um... Yes, okay, it checks to see if there's actually room for the student in one section of the course. Now, where is that kept? Where is that kept? Is there room? Course Enrollment Database, okay. I'm just going to call it Enroll. C Enroll. Is there any room, C Enroll, to request this thingy? Room? Question mark. If there is room, is taken up because it says for that database stores info about enrollment in the course like number of sections in the course the number of students presently enrolled in each section the maximum number of students allowed in each section all stored within the database on a per course ID basis so an update that another student has been enrolled maybe it's been enrolled in there as well and then student registration but also say if he's currently enrolled in another course, stores information about the course the student has taken, is presently taking, or wants to take. Only keeps track of courses that a student is really enrolled in, i.e. not on waiting list for. Okay, so that's where... another enroll. I hope you guys can still hear me because I realize I'm talking at a sound that I usually talk to when someone's sitting next to me. Oh, and if he's enrolled and there's room, then the student's enrolled and informed. Okay. You're in. Uh, I should probably actually say enrolled, not just you're in. But I like it on the way. If there's no room in the course for the student, the system then checks to see if there's room on the course waiting list. So, room? No room. So now we need our waiting list here as well. Okay. Zoom. See? Wait. So it said. Do, 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 do. Checks to see if there's room on the waiting list. Other is there a room request? Room? If there is, then place 
student on waiting list. On list. There's no room on list and the students uh, there's no room on list and students placed on the waiting list. Formed Oh wait, oh, I apologize. Okay, if there's no room in the course for the student, then the system checks to see if there is room on the course's waiting list. So we did that, checked that. If there is room on the list, then the student is placed on the waiting list and informed. Okay. You're waiting. If there is no room in the course or on the waiting list, the system informs the student. Ooh, that's a really sad situation. No go. Oh, well, actually, it should be um, more like no possibility, no room, no go. Let's go. No room. Big capitals to point out that it's all. You know, no room. Boom, kind of thing. Okay, now I'm just going to double check to see if this actually is the same as what Sean had. Room, enroll, empty room. Yes, waiting. Yes, on list. You're enrolled. Sorry, no prerequisites, no more requests, and no room. Got five there. And I think I got just four on here. No requests, no. Prereqs, kind of the prerequisites, or you're enrolled. And this is supposed to be you're on the waiting list. If he's on the waiting list, he's supposed to be informed. And then no go, no room anywhere, as in you're not in any of this. Yeah, okay, I think actually the original document might have missed something, because that seems about right. Because, uh, let's see, in the final statement of the use of the enrollment system, if there's no room in the course for the student, the student system then checks to see if there is room on the course's waiting list. Yep. If there is room on the list, then the student is placed on the list and informed. You're waiting. Okay, yeah. The system inform if there's no room in the course or the waiting list, then it tells no go. Yeah, okay, that seems about right. So this is our level one fragment. Cool. Now, um, hopefully you are following along or you're getting the idea here. Feel free to try duplicating this sort of thing by yourself afterwards to see if you do have the concept and understand how to go through the CRUD diagram you created earlier to actually create your fragment levels and your fragment designs. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on to the second level because this is just the first level fragment design. For this, I'm going to destroy it. Oh, 